Hey. I love you. Hold on no. with words from my mouth. Cause I love you. I need you to serve. Hi, Yana. It is his will that every need be supplied. Hi, y'all. We finna get into this live. God wants me to do a live one here about how to teach you how to keep your peace in the name of Christ Jesus. Welcome, 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 y'all. I love y'all. Hallelujah. I love y'all. Welcome. You know, I did. I actually did this live on my Instagram yesterday, but hi, Daisy. But God told me to do this live on TikTok as well on how to keep your peace for those of you who don't have. <laughs> Go tell Instagram, girl, to get on here. I posted it on my story. Hi, Lele. Lay, babe. Hi, London. Welcome, y'all. Welcome. Rasha Gambell. Welcome, y'all. So we're going to do this live on I love you, too. Hopefully you have your peace in Jesus Christ's name. So for those of you who missed my live yesterday on Instagram, hi, Shanti. I love you. Oh, I love you, Daisy. For those of y'all who are troubled, who don't have no peace right now, we finna get into this about how to keep your peace. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, it is. It is pretty explicit. Yeah. Mm hmm. But yes, y'all, come on in. Enter in the room. It is his will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. Are y'all ready? All right. So, God wants us to have the peace that surpasses all understanding. Some of us are going through a rough time. You know, whether it's you can be at the pivotal moment of your life. You can have all the money that you want. You can have the job that you want in Jesus Christ's name. I love y'all so much. Thank y'all for saying that. Glory be to God. So this, um, Ashanti, this is basically the same live from, from that one. But God just told me to do it on my TikTok, you know. Tomorrow I'll be on here as well, Lord willing, at 9.30 p.m. But tomorrow we're going to talk about deception and how to not be deceived in Jesus Christ's name because there are spirits of deception that have gone out. And God wants us to be prepared so that we don't perish, so that we don't be deceived as well. But that's tomorrow. Tonight we're going to talk about how to keep your peace in the name of Christ Jesus. You know, like I said, uh, welcome, welcome. Hey, y'all, what's up? A lot of people are going through hard times, whether you had a loss of a loved one, whether you just got evicted, whether you're waiting on a loved one to come home, whether your family member's in a hospital, or you just experienced something, you know, a, a lot of us go through different things, and my struggles may not be your struggles, and your struggles may not be my struggles, but we all still struggle in some way, shape, or form, so God wants us to learn how to keep our peace, glory be to God. You know, he gave me steps, he gave me scriptures to help you to keep your peace, so if you call your pastor or you call your mentor or you call your friend and they'll answer the phone. God wants you to have the foundation in how to keep your peace. Amen. Uh, you need to know how to, what you talk about deception or you need to know about peace. Cause this, this live is about peace tomorrow night. Lord willing, I, I'm going to do a live on deception in Jesus Christ's name. But yes. Yeah, so we need to know how to keep our peace in the midst of chaos. G girl, I understand. I got you though. I got you in Jesus Christ's name. So we need to know, man, like, especially when we get bad news so that we don't crumble, so that we don't perish, so that we don't want to offer ourselves. Amen. Jesus Christ's name. We need to know how to keep our peace. We need to know how to, you know what? Just vibe. Daisy, Daisy always uses the word like vibe. We just need to vibe, right? In Jesus Christ's name. So we need to know how to like let things go, how to not always respond. Because if you come from where I come from, we had to respond. We had to retaliate. We was taught that, like, hey, you better do this or do that or you're going to get in trouble. So sometimes re not responding is, is, is peaceful. Not responding is healthy. Amen. So, all right. So number one on how to keep your peace, you have to know that God surpasses all understanding. That's, that's bottom line. That's the foundation that God is real. Jesus Christ is real. In Jesus Christ, we have our peace. But number one is confess how you feel. 
So we confess to God how we feel, or if God sends somebody in your life, you can tell them how you feel. Like today I'm having a bad day. I don't feel good. I feel worthless. I feel useless. I feel hopeless. I don't feel like I can go on. Help me. You know, you have to begin to confess how you feel so that you are not like, thank you, Mimi. So you are not feeling ashamed or if you've been violated in your life or you violated yourself by giving your body to multiple people and you just feel ashamed like you're never going to find love or whatever you confess that to God or if you feel like your children's dad is not a part of your life or if you feel like your mother is not a good mother or your dad is not a good dad or y'all didn't protect me when I was little or whatever the case may be you confess those things to God God everybody get promoted and I don't well Lord this lady at my job she got promoted and she don't even work as hard as me or this person work ain't even as good as mine but they're popular and I'm not you're going to have to confess those things to God so the enemy doesn't use them against you. Glory be to God. So Matthew chapter 20, I mean, Matt, excuse me, Matthew chapter 12, verse 37. By your words, you'll be acquitted and by your words, you'll be condemned. So our words matter. What we say matter. So we confess to God how we feel and then we accept his words. Then we speak his words over us. Glory be to God. So if you feel like you're struggling, you don't have nothing, you tell God that, well, Lord, I feel like, I don't have enough. I know that you did this. I know you sent somebody to help me, but God, it's not enough. I don't understand what's going on. Amen. Jesus Christ name. So we confess to God how we feel. We tell God, well, Lord, you let, I feel like you let this person hurt my feelings. I feel like you let this person break my heart. I feel like you let this person do this to me or whatever. And you confess that to God. You tell God how you feel and you allow God to bring healing. You allow God to bring deliverance. Because I don't know if, if about y'all, but when I get into the presence of God, he will begin to show me, baby, you're hurt about this. Baby, let me heal that. You still bothered by that. You know, like how you go through something now and then it'll remind you or something that you went through like five years ago. And God want to show you, hey, you still hurt from that. Let me heal that. In Jesus Christ's name. So sometimes we'll go through something today and then you're God to show you like, hey. I understand you go through this today. I'm sorry that this person hurt your feelings, but you're really hurt about what happened to you in 2015. You're really hurt about what the, your brother did to you. You really hurt about what your dad did to you. You're not even really mad about this. Jesus and God are one. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. It's all throughout the scripture in the name of Jesus Christ. So Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, life and death are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat from it. So they, they will eat of it, right? So we have to we have to be in a place to where we speak life over ourselves it's okay to tell god how you feel it's okay to feel sad but make sure you're not speaking death over yourself oh i ain't gonna never do this i ain't gonna never be this i ain't never gonna have this i ain't uh, all men cheat or all women cheat so you want to make sure that you are speaking what god says over your life speak what god says about marriage over your life speak what god says about your womb over your life speak what god says about family over your life hallelujah god you did it for daniel you rescued David, you rescued Solomon, you rescued Queen Esther, Lord God, and I'm in a situation where I need rescue. And so, God, I believe that you, I believe that you are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God, you're, you're my God too. I believe that you can rescue me, Lord, because there's nothing that I can do in my own strength. I'm not making enough money. Da, 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 and you just tell God how you feel. Amen. In Jesus Christ's name. And that will help you to keep your peace. Just confess how you feel. Sometimes when I feel overwhelmed, I would just get on my knees and I would cry out to him, Lord, I don't understand. I don't understand what's going on. I don't understand what this is, Lord. I don't understand where I'm at in my life. And I will cry out to him. I will get, yep, but, but Jesus said that. You know what's so, what's so crazy that the Bible says in the last days there will be mockers, there will be scoffers. Hallelujah. So people don't even understand that they are bringing the Bible to they, they're bringing prophecies to pass by them just doing what they're doing in Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah. So it's just like, let them come because Lord willing, they get to experience the Holy Spirit. They come into repentance and they get saved so they don't perish for lack of knowledge. They don't perish for all eternity. So God told me to let them come. Let the mockers come. Let the witches come. Let the warlocks come. Let all of those people come in Jesus Christ's name so they can get this Jesus Maybe they can repent in Jesus Christ's name and be saved and they can go and preach the gospel and they can go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are welcome. You are welcome. I love you. I love you, 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 and you in Jesus Christ's name, period. So Psalm chapter 55, verse 22, leave your troubles with the Lord and he will defend you. He never lets honest people uh, be defeated. Glory be to God. So you want God to know how you feel and you leave it there. 
You know what I'm saying? So once you get into God's presence and you tell him how you feel, Lord, I feel this. I don't feel like I value. I don't feel like nobody ever choose me because that was my confession a long time ago. Lord, people don't choose me. I'm never chosen for nothing. I'm always overlooked. I'm always last or whatever, whatever, whatever. And then God gave me the scripture. The last shall be first and the first shall be last. And I said, okay, God, great is my portion, Lord God. You said that you want me to prosper as my soul prospers. I began to confess how I felt to God. And then he showed me his plans for me. I began to confess how he felt about me. You tell God how you feel and then you confess how God feels about you. You confess what God is saying about you because that just increases your faith, your faith, excuse me, and it brings forth peace in the name of Jesus Christ because it is not in God's will for any man to perish, but for him to know, come and know truth in Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah, in Jesus Christ's name. So we want to be in a place to where we tell God how we feel. Tell God you're tired of waiting. Lord, I'm I'm tired of waiting. Come on now. When is my time? You remember that video with that girl? She was like, come on, God. You say you always on time, but what time is it? That girl, Morgan, she was crying. She was upset. Tell God you're tired of waiting. Tell God you're ready to be married. Tell God these things and then leave it at his presence and tell him you trust him though. God, I'm tired of waiting. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of that. But you know what, Lord? Help me. Help me with my patience. Help me with my unbelief. Help me to trust your perfect time. And help me to even know that you are perfect. That if I tell you that I'm sick of waiting on this man, I'm sick of waiting on this job, I'm sick of waiting on this money, that you love me enough to be kind to me, to be patient with me, not to just smite me down because I gave you attitude. Because some of y'all get my daddy attitude. But he said it's okay. He still love you in Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah. Step number two, okay, number one was to confess to God how you feel. That helps you to keep your peace. Am I funny? People always say I'm funny. <laughs> how is step number two is to surrender how you think that it should go because God has a plan. You got to surrender what you think it should be. You got to surrender how you think it will turn out because, you know, I don't know if, about y'all. You know how you go through certain things and you want something to turn out this way or you apply for a job and you want to get that job. Like we moved to California and I just knew I was going to go get a record deal. I just knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I thought that I was going to go. I was going to get a record deal. I done met the manager of certain artists. I done met somebody that done worked with Tupac. He done worked with Missy Elliott. I'm thinking I'm going to be on. Nothing happened. And I was so disappointed. I was so sad. And I had to give that to God. I had a rec I had a record deal on the table. Nothing happened. It didn't go. It it flopped. Didn't work. Nope. No studio time. No money. Still homeless. None of that stuff worked. Amen. In Jesus Christ's name. But I had to surrender how I thought it should go. Me thinking, oh, I'm finna come out here, I'm finna go to Cali, I'm finna be famous. I'm finna be rubbing elbows with the somebody's. None of that happened. I was homeless in cali prophesying to homeless people i was laying hands on homeless people i was i was feeding homeless people in my homelessness i was i was speaking life i was praying i was prophesying to the people that would be considered nobodies god sent me there to 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 minister to the people that other people overlook that pastors overlook that other prophets overlook and i'm like oh i thought i was coming here to be famous but I had to surrender that because that's what I thought was going to happen. I thought that, you know, that's why you have to surrender how you think it's going to go. Okay, you thinking that you finna do something, you finna give somebody some money, and then they're going to be telling everybody, oh, this person's this. Or you thinking that you finna go network with these folks, and these folks going to put you on, and then they don't. And it's just like, but that's what you thought was supposed to happen. That's how you thought it was going to go. But that doesn't mean it's how God wanted it to go. So you have to surrender how you think it's going to go, how you think this conversation is going to go. Okay, well, if I tell you how I feel, maybe you'll have sympathy for me and you'll be like, I understand. And you're not going to just tell me to shut up and cut me off. You get what I'm saying? So you're going to have to be okay that it may not go the way that you think. So you're going to have to surrender how you think it's going to go. How you, okay, well, this is my grand opening. I think everybody's going to come surrender that. Because if they don't, you're going to have to be okay with that. You you can't feel like a loser. You can't forfeit your dreams and your desires just because it didn't go that way. So surrender your plans and surrender the outcome that you think should happen. Well, if I wear this dress around him, he going to tell me I'm cute. And then we just going to be, you know, and that man playing a game. He ain't look at you now one time. And now you mad. 
But that's because you thought it was going to go away and it didn't go that way. You get what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Surrendering, surrendering is not hard when you willingly trust God. You know, it's easy to surrender when you trust God. It's easy to surrender. Hey, hey, Martin. It's easy to surrender when you know that God loves you. It's easy to surrender when you believe that God did it before and he'll do it again. It's easy to surrender when you speak it in Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah. Jesus told the fig tree to wither away. So if you continue to say that it's hard, it's going to be hard. And sometimes it's hard to surrender things that you really don't want to give up. See, me personally, I don't care about nothing more than I care about God. Not my children, not my man, not my family. I don't put them before God. So it's easy to surrender when God tell me to surrender, I may probably, I probably going to cry about it, but it's not hard for me to let things go because I trust God. I know that God can raise the dead. I know that God can heal the sick. I know that God is perfect and he loves me. In Jesus Christ's name. <laughs> You're the second person today that has told me that they emotional today. It's okay. Glory be to God. So Romans chapter 10, verse 13. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. In Jesus Christ's name. Let me let me pause real quick. Uh, Lele was like, you know, the 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 scoffers, they coming already. When God gives you his Holy Spirit and you have gentleness and you have love, for some for some reason, demonic principalities would end up being quiet or they'll just leave. Hallelujah. Because when the presence of God hit a person, demons, they'll manifest, but then they either gonna leave or they're gonna have to be quiet. In Jesus' name, that's why God wants us to walk in love. That's why God wants us to walk in patience. That's why God wants us to walk in gentleness. Last year when we were doing our Zooms, he said, let the witches come. Now I was like, Lord, I mean, I'm not you. I'm not all powerful. I'm not almighty. So witches come, they can just do spells on me. They can, they can cause witchcraft to happen on me. You know, they can't do spells on you because you God. So you telling me on my Zoom that just let the witches come. That mean you got my backup, right? That mean like if they put spells on me, you're going to save me and then I can't die, right? Because you telling me to let them come and I just need to know I'm protected because these are witches. They cast spells. They do harm. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. You get what I'm saying? But it's just like, they going to come. Mockers, scoffers, naysayers, persecutors, slanderers. Welcome, welcome. We love you. Welcome to the assembly. Welcome to the body of Christ. Jesus loves you. That's me all day. You know what I'm saying? So let them come. What's up? What's Hannah? How you doing? God loves you. I love you. Do you want to hug me? People think you're weird. You want to hug me? I'm talking about your God. I love you. God loves you. Then they just go exit out, exit out, exit out every time. All right. So Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. That goes back to you surrendering how you think it should go. Surrender. Oh, persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. Basically, surrender your plans to God's plan so that you can live according to his will. So when you live according to his will, you will receive the promise that he made you. In Jesus Christ's name, you cannot expect for God to move over here if he told you to move to Chicago. You all the way in Dubai. He told you to be in Chicago. He told you to steward in Chicago. It ain't going to go the way you want it to go all the time. It's going to go the way God wants it to go if you're living according to his will. In Jesus Christ's name. You know, I love y'all. You know, I love y'all. All righty. All right. So God provided for the Israelites in Exodus chapter 16. When God gave them quail, God gave them food to eat, even though they was complaining. Oh, when we was in Egypt, we ate this, we ate that. Well, you're eating this in the wilderness. You're not a slave anymore. Hello, in Jesus Christ's name. Okay, so y'all can y'all can go to that. It's pretty long. It's Exodus chapter 16, verse 11 through like 18. And that's when God was basically showing you that even though they was rescued out of Egypt. He protected them and he, he was feeding them. He fed them according to his plan. Amen. In Jesus Christ's name. So Genesis chapter 16 verses 6 through 11, it talks about Hagar, Sarah's slave. God made Sarah a promise. Hey, you're going to have a son. You are name him Isaac. Sarah laughed. Ha ha ha. He said, are you laughing? She said, no, Lord, I'm not laughing. I didn't laugh. You laugh. You lie. What you lying for? What you lying for? He is almighty God. You can't lie to God. Have you ever experienced this? One time God told me like, daughter, you know, you, you have trauma from being rejected. 
you have trauma. Like, you have trauma. You don't want to be alone. You have a problem being alone. I'm sitting on the edge of my bed. This was like four or five years ago. I said, God, no, I don't. He said, yes, you do. I said, Lord, no, I don't. I don't have a problem being alone. He said, yes, you do. Have you ever experienced that? God tell you something about you and you like, God, that's that's not me. I ain't like that. Yes, you are. He's almighty God. Sarah tried to tell God, I I didn't laugh. Yes, you did. God told you you was going to have a son with your old self and you laughed. It's not funny. So you know what Sarah did? She said, oh, Abraham, go sleep with my slave and have a son. Hagar got pregnant with Ishmael. Sarah was like, oh, Abraham, you did this to me. Hey, God did this to me. You're, she's making fun of me because she's pregnant. And he said, do to her as you please. Go ahead. Then she started being mean to her. Hey, God ran away. Then God met her when she was running away. And he sent the angel to tell her that he was going to take care of her. And her descendants will be very, very numerous in Jesus Christ's name. That's basically some of that scripture. I'm just very, very dramatic. But that's God letting you know that his plan is better than your plan. God literally told her, go back to Sarah. To go back to being abused, mistreated because her man slept with me. I'm just a slave. You want me to go back to Sarah and be mistreated while I'm pregnant? This wasn't even my idea. I was cleaning up, and I was I was herding the sheep. He came and slept with me. It's not my fault. <laughs> this is not my fault, you know. But God told her to go back, go back, go back to her and submit to her. Then the angel added, I will increase your descendants so much that they will be too numerous to count. So sometimes God will send you back into a bad situation to be mistreated. And then you will get rewarded afterwards. Not probably not right then, but you still will. Yeah. Okay, so pray at night and play, play the scriptures while you um while you uh resting. I listen to the Bible. And I listen to God's Grace by Trinity 5-7 on my iPad. So I have both of them playing. God's presence is all up in this place. In Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah. All right. So Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9. The heart of a man is his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. So when you surrender your will to God, he will establish your steps. When you surrender your will to God, he will establish your steps. So you surrender the way you think you should go. You surrender the way you think you should be treated. You know how people, I, I watched this commercial, the St. Jude commercial, and they were saying like, oh, these children don't deserve this. They don't deserve cancer. And it just made me feel like, who are we to say what we don't deserve? So when you stop getting out of that, that it's, it's, it's like pride to say what you don't deserve. Well, I deserve a man to treat me right. I deserve a woman to treat me right. I deserve this man to rub my feet. I deserve to be taken care of because I went through so much. Who were you? Because the only begotten son was on the cross saying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. So who are you to say you deserve anything? Are you blameless? Are you righteous? Are you without sin? You deserve nothing, sister, brother. Amen. Jesus Christ's name. So we surrender the way that we think that it should go so that we can have peace, so that we are not upset, so that we are not detoured, so that we are not depressed and miserable because we thinking that it should go this way and then God has other plans or the enemy has other plans. I'm pretty sure Job didn't think that all 10 of his kids was going to die in one day. I'm pretty sure he didn't wake up saying, boy, yeah, we're getting ready because all oh, my kids going to die today. Oh, I really yawn for real, y'all. That was crazy. Yeah, I really yawn for real. But you know what I'm saying? So we got to surrender our plans. So that we can have peace, surrender your plans, surrender your desires, surrender your timeline so that you can have my peace, says the Holy Spirit of the living God. Because everything that I want to do for you may not go with your time. The Lord had me to release a message today about how, you know, to whom much is given, much is required. And a lot of people teach that from the aspect of when you get there, you know, you got to be good, you got to be faithful, you got to be kind, but you're going to be tested before you even get there. How are you going to steward over what you have now? And sometimes if God promised you a really big prophecy, a really big promise, that takes a lot of stewardship. You may have to steward over your stuff longer than them. They may get their car first because what you have to do is bigger. They may get their husband first because you have, you, maybe you and your husband got to do ministry. Maybe y'all got to do certain things and they don't. You know what I'm saying? So don't live in comparison to other people. Don't think that your life has to go that way. You know, because 
what God has for you. So say if God promised you a business and he, okay, I'm going to tell you, um, it, stewardship is basically how you take care of something, how you nurture something. That's how, that's how God showed it to me. Right. So, so what you, so how you, so say if the Lord promised you a baby, now you're around all these other people's babies. How are you going to treat their babies? while you're waiting on your baby glory be to god in jesus christ's name how are you going to serve in other people's ministry while you're waiting on waiting on your ministry how are you going to serve in other people's business while you're waiting on god to release your business in jesus christ's name so sometimes the assignment some some assignments take more training so when i had to work at when I had to work at a daycare, the training was different from when I had to work at a T-Mobile call center. T-Mobile call center, the training was eight weeks. At the daycare, the training wasn't as long as that. So some jobs, some assignments, some callings, hallelujah, takes more training from God. You know, you got to, okay, so God called you to be a prophet. He said, you're going to preach, you're going to prophesy to the nations. You're going to go to this place, this place, this place. That's a big deal. So God got to train you a little bit more that person may get their ministry the same year that, that god called you to but god may isolate you for a little bit longer because of what you have to do because of your job so your training may have to be a little bit more strenuous than them so don't be living in comparison god literally sat me down and isolated me for over three years before he even had me start a ministry before he even ordained me he literally pulled me to the side and sat me down because daughter when I give you this ministry, when I give you this platform, I got to make sure you're ready. So for those of you who are still waiting, maybe it's because God wants to make sure that you don't mess this up when you get it. You still waiting on the husband? Okay, God, what else areas do I need healing in? Maybe when your husband comes, you got to help him to heal from his childhood trauma. Maybe his childhood trauma was worse than yours. Maybe he was neglected. Maybe he grew up in an orphanage. Maybe he grew up in foster care. And God got to prune you so that you not miss attitude and you're not so quick to walk out on him if things don't go your way. So God wants to prune you a little bit longer. He want to deliver you from some more stuff. He want to fix your attitude a little bit more. Glory be to God. For those of you who are waiting on a, a ministry, maybe God wants to prune you a little bit more so people don't get on your nerves just like when he told moses speak to the rock and moses struck the rock because moses was irritated with the people in jesus christ's name so sometimes your wait may be a little bit longer because your assignment is a little bit bigger it was so many people that god prof told me to prophesy a record deal to oh god said he gonna verify your instagram then boom they get their instagram verified even though he told me he was gonna verify my instagram i'm still waiting and god is like what if your assignment what if you have to do a little bit more than what they have to do? What if you have to reach more people than them? Don't live in comparison. Don't compare your walk to other people's walk. Don't compare your gifting and your calling to other people's gifting and calling. That will lead you to destruction. And that will lead you to walk out of God's timing. Hallelujah. And yes, learn to be content in the waiting in Jesus Christ's name. Because as you wait on the Lord, God will bring forth the things that he told you he would bring forth. Amen. Glory be to God. So sometimes what you have to do, it takes a little bit more training. You know, the, the type of people that I have to deal with, like on January 1st, I met this girl. She was molested by her family members. She had to go into foster care. She got arrested at 14 and she went to jail. She, she, she was fighting at the jail. Then terrible. She was, she was neglected by her mama. And it's like, God had to prepare me to meet somebody like that because he gave me exactly what to say to her. He fixed my heart so I knew exactly what to say to her so that she can be delivered instantly. But it took time. It took pruning. It took for God to remove everything from me so I can just hear his voice. So when I meet somebody like this, somebody that don't want to go to church, somebody that don't trust the pastor, somebody that's sick of people, somebody that don't want to hear about God, I know exactly what to say because I've been trained. I've been trained up. I sat and I've been trained and I've been, I'm waiting on this. Yeah, I know what to do because I have proper training. That's like when you go take a test and you didn't study, you don't know what the heck is on this test. You didn't study the material. I've been studying. I've been diligent. I've been vigilant. I've been faithful. So I'm ready when I got to meet difficult cases. I know what I got to do. I know how to help you because my daddy taught me how to help you. When nobody saw me, when nobody knew who I was, when nobody cared to watch the video, when I would post the videos and I was only getting three views, 
my daddy was training me. I'm qualified for this. So could it be that where I have to take you, says the Holy Spirit of the living God, you need a little bit more training. You need a little bit more pruning. You need to be a little bit more gentle. I used to be so rough and tough that God had to send people into my life that didn't like to be talked to in a rough way. But me coming up in my house, everybody was rough. Everybody cussed at each other. And that's just how we love. But it wasn't real love. So God sent God sent one of my sisters in Christ. Her name is Millie. She, she on here too. He sent her into my life and she taught me how to be gentle. She taught me how to not talk to people rough. Like I had to learn how to be gentle. I had to learn how to be sweet. Like I had to learn how to be like, are you okay? It's okay. Not like, girl, you need to get that together and stop crying. I couldn't do her like that. I had to be like, you know, God loves you and it's okay. We go through things. God used her to teach me how to be gentle. So could it be that the outcome that you want, you are not ready for? Could it be that the outcome that you want is right around the corner? You just need not to give up. Hallelujah. It may not have worked out, but does that mean you quit? You know, you may, you may have messed up on something. Does that mean you just quit? You may have posted a video and nobody watched it. Does that mean you stop posting videos? No. It means you keep going. Okay, Lord, well, nobody watches video. What you want me to do? Keep posting videos. That doesn't mean quit. I have called you. I have chosen you. I'm anointing you. I'm preparing you. Hallelujah. Rejection comes with the territory. I've walked up to people before. Um, can I, can I, can I pray for you? No. I was in Rick Ross' house one time. And his baby mama, she was real, real big and pregnant. And God showed me somebody trying to sacrifice her baby to the enemy. I looked at her and said, hey, can I pray for you? Can I pray for your baby? She was like, girl, no. I was like, hmm, okay. But I know what her baby was finna go through. She didn't know that. I knew what was finna happen to her child. But she said, no, you can't pray for me. I'm like, hmm, okay. I wash my hands with it. You're not rejecting me. You're rejecting God and what God is trying to do. Amen. Glory be to God. So when sometimes, yo, if you don't like rejection, God got to prepare you for that. God got to prove you for that. So you don't take it personal and be like, I don't want to do this anymore, Jesus. I'm sick of people. Strike this rock. Bam. God told Moses, speak to the rock and it'll, water will flow from it. Moses got so tired, tired of the people, the complainers, the naggers, the accusers, the slanderers, the naysayers that he struck the rock and he missed out on everything God had for them. It's not always going to go as you think. You got to surrender that to the Lord. Step number three. So in order to keep your, yeah, in order to keep your peace, it's not, it's not that far from my house. It's like down the street. It's really, really big though. It's, it's like, got, it got an elevator in it. It's got like three stories on the elevator, probably more than that. But I think we was on like the second floor, but she was like, girl, no. I was like, mm, okay, well, mm, mm, fine. All right. All right. So in order to keep your peace, step number one, confess how you feel. Step number two, surrender how you think it should go because God has a plan. Glory be to God. Step number three is to stay in his word. A part of the reason some of y'all don't have peace is because you're not in God's word. You're not spending time in his word. Hallelujah. You are not reading his word because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Hallelujah. We need his word. That is Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Faith comes by hearing, comma, meaning in addition to a meaning. Something is coming after this. Hallelujah. A comma means something is about to be added. It's, it's a comma, right? Faith comes by hearing, comma, and hearing the word of God. Glory be to God. So the things that we pour into our spirit will be like how you feel. You get what I'm saying? So if you want, if you just watching stuff that ain't got that ain't gonna produce fruit in your life and you watch all these ghetto shows and you know you want zeus watching all of these things you got that that's what you're feeding to your spirit then you wonder why you're violent you wonder why you're beating people up you know what i'm saying so you want to feed your spirit god's word because out of the mouth flows what's on the heart so if you fill up your heart with god's word it will begin to flow out your mouth when you face adversity it'll begin to flow out your mouth when people are mean to you it'll begin to flow out your mouth if you go through a divorce or you go through a heartache or you have a miscarriage somebody just wrote me today and said that they just had a miscarriage recently you know but as you as you fill up your presence i mean as you fill up your 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 vessel with god's holy spirit with god's holy word you know that will begin to pour out of you so instead of your first thought being negative, 
it'll be God's word. It'll be a scripture. And that begins to increase your faith. That'll begin to draw you closer to the true and living God. Hallelujah in Jesus Christ's name. So Colossians chapter three, verse 16. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you as you teach and admonish one another. Welcome, welcome. Hey, how you doing? Um, with all wisdom, as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. So he wants his word to dwell richly within you. He wants you to receive his word, abide in his word, you know, speak God's word. Okay, well, Lord, I don't know how I'm gonna pay this bill, but you said in Philippians 4:19 that you shall supply all of my needs according to your riches and glory. I don't care if you don't know the scriptures by heart. There's this app called the Holy Bible app, and you can do a Bible plan. Like, okay, so if you need help with your faith, you can click the plan of faith, and every day it'll give you a scripture by faith. If you have issues with your finances, it'll give you scriptures on how to trust God. Glory be to God. Because sometimes God will allow you to go into a situation so that you have to trust him. Like I was telling y'all on my live last night, like when Jesus found out Lazarus was sick, he didn't go to him. He stayed two more days. And when he went there, Lazarus had been there for four days. He allowed him to die so that he could show them that he is the resurrection. They was like, well, we know that on the day of resurrection, we'll see our brother. He said, I'm the resurrection. What you mean, Martha? I'm the resurrection. Glory be to God. He is the resurrection. So sometimes he will allow things in your life to die. He'll allow relationships to die. He'll make it look like you, you ain't got you ain't got no food. You ain't got no money. You can't. I remember being in a place in a position to where I had seven dollars to go to McDonald's to feed my children. And I fed them and I didn't have no money to eat. And I sat in the car and um i went i took them in the house i put them at the table and i and i and i um and i let them eat and i sat in the car i said god no way my life is always gonna be like this you can't possibly leave me here i know for a fact you're not gonna leave me here because god you know what you rescued daniel out the lion's den like i'm pretty sure when he went in there he didn't necessarily know he was gonna be rescued god i feel like i'm in the lion's den like, I don't know what to do. I just, I could just call on your name. So sometimes you get in that, that spot to where it's like, you realize that I need you. I need you, God. I can't, I can't do this without you. I don't have a babysitter to, to help me watch my kids. I don't, I don't have a car. I don't have this. I don't have that, Lord. I don't really have nothing but you. But that's enough. That's enough. Hey, but look how God turned your life around. Look how God turned it around. And that's what I'm talking about. God allows us to go through certain things so that we can be a testimony, so that we can speak. Hey, you know, I understand you homeless right now, but God is a way maker. Well, how do you know that? You know, that the Bible was written so long ago. He made a way for me. You are a way maker. Yeah, he a way maker. He made a way for me. I was homeless too. I didn't have no money either, and he did it for me. Hallelujah in Jesus Christ's name. Something else that the Lord showed me about Sharon and Misha and Abednego, Abednego, he saved them. Everybody else bowed to King Nebuchadnezzar's statue, right? And they did it. They said, even if our God doesn't save us, we still ain't worshiping nobody else. We still ain't bowing to your statue, bro. We ain't bowing to your statue. And God showed up for them. And you'll make a way for me. When you <laughs> I love you, Mahogany. Um, you know, so they was like, and even if God doesn't save us, you know, we're still not gonna bow to your statue. And God showed up for them. And a part of the reason he showed up for them was because they stood up for him. Hallelujah. They was like, we not, and they decided not it, can you imagine? That's just like me, Veronica, and Mahogany. We standing here. We like, we not bowing to your statue, bro. Even if God don't save us, we still ain't bowing to your statue. And everybody else around us bowed. And God showed up. And God could have saved them before they threw them in the fire. Because the people that threw them in the fire, they got burnt. They died. If you go read it, the people that had them, that were throwing them in the fire, they died. But these three men didn't. Why? Because they were proven faithful. Because it's like... They took up for God so much and they had their life on the line. God had no re God, God was like, I got to show up for y'all. I got to because God got to clear his name. Like he got to show y'all that, hey, I'm the true and living God. I'm a God that's able to save. God can literally save you before it gets too bad. 
but sometimes he don't. Sometimes he don't save you before it gets too bad so that he can prove to you and to other people that he is the true and living God, that he is perfect, that he is holy, that he is worthy to be praised in Jesus Christ's name. So sometimes God will allow, I remember sleeping in a truck. I was outside of my friend's mom's house. I'm sleeping in a truck like, you have won a victory. Just singing to God, crying like, God, you you can't possibly leave me here <laughs> in this truck. I'm sleeping in a truck. You can't possibly leave me here. Then God began to give me visions about my life, visions about my future, visions about me getting married, visions about me singing on stage and people are worshiping his name. And that gave me hope. Sometimes God got to let you get to the lowest of the low so that you can know you need him, so that you can know that he is a God that's able to save so that you can know that you can never do this on your own. You can't, you can't do this on your own. I don't care how gifted you are, how talented you are, how smart you are, how many degrees that you got. If it wasn't for God waking you up in the morning, giving you intellect, giving you intelligence, helping you to pass those tests, you wouldn't be anything. So everything goes back to God. Hallelujah. The very breath in your body goes back to God. Without God, you're nothing. You ain't no smart person. You ain't good at nothing. You ain't nothing without God. Glory be to God. I know a lot of talented people. I know a lot of famous people. I know a lot of people that got a lot of degrees. But God God put that breath in your body. God gave you intellect. He created you. Before you was in your mother's womb, he created you in Jesus Christ's name. So give that glory back to him. You ain't no self-made. You ain't no man-made. You ain't, you're a God-made, and you need to be God-fearing. In Jesus Christ's name. You get what I'm saying? All right. So Romans chapter one, verse 16. Hallelujah. When we read it. Okay. Before I say Romans chapter one, when we read about what God has done for those before us, it brings us hope and it increases our faith. You know, your good news gives me hope. Hallelujah. Like, okay, God, you did what you said you was going to do for Veronica. You did what you said you was going to do for LJ. You did what you said you was going to do for Mahogany God. So glory be to God. I thank you that you did it for them. So I know you're going to do it for me too. Thank you, Lord God, because you're not a liar. You're, you're the same God that I, they serve you, I serve you too. I just got to wait on my turn. I'm going to clap for them while it's their turn, but I'm also going to patiently wait on my turn. Lord, who you need me to help while I'm waiting? Who you need me to pray for while I'm waiting? Who you need me to serve? Who you need me to feed? Who you need me to let me live in my house while I am waiting? Hallelujah. How are you? What's your heart's posture while you're waiting? You know what I'm saying? How how are you acting while you waiting? Like, are you you go you got an attitude? You jealous? You know what you got going on while you waiting? Um. Yeah, but you know you don't want to put people in a place to where I my, when I tell my sister that people do stuff to me, she be like, we don't care about none of that. Well, I don't know. Destiny, you still on here? Tats with vote. My sister is a tattoo artist. She. She works in the suite right now in Atlanta. We don't care about none of that. We don't care about that. That's her thing. So it's teaching me that I can't care. I can't care what people say about me. The enemy is the accuser of the brethren. And 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 I think I told Millie like in the be before the beginning of this month, like last season, God was telling me, like, you finna go into a season where you're gonna be accused of a lot of stuff. But the devil is a liar, stay blameless. And I'm like, hmm. Who could possibly accuse me of anything? What did I do? You know, so it's okay to be hurt, but confess that to God and give that to God and speak God's word and pay attention to God's word. Hallelujah. But God always warns us when, they, when things are about to happen. He may show you in a dream. He may have somebody to tell you. You may read it in his word. Glory be to God. And a lot of times we have this thing where, you know, I'm the type of person, I don't put nothing past nobody. I don't care if it's granddaddy, grand uncle, cousin, brother, whatever. I don't put nothing past nobody because the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And if your vessel is open, the enemy can make you do whatever he wants you to do. Amen. So, you know, I had a, I had one girl, God had me to tell her, your daughter's being, she being touched on, you know, and she, she didn't really believe me, but God revealed it to her through her daughter. You get what I'm saying? But that goes back to putting stuff past people. Glory be to God. So, you know, you want to be in a place where you trust God first and you trust people second. 
Amen. Yeah. Worship while you wait. Trust him. Speak to him. Talk to him. Lord, this hurt my feelings that she said that. This hurt my feelings and da 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 da, da. In Jesus Christ's name, I had a dream we're invaded by China. Well, you talking about America? Hey, persecution is coming to America. Write that dream down. Ask God for revelation or ask God to show you what's going on. In Jesus Christ's name. All right. So Mark chapter 13, verse 31. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. So we have to say his word so that we can know that his word is true. So we can know that he is a true and living God. Glory be to God. He is perfect. He is holy. Write that down. Write that dream down. Write that dream down. Write it down. Write it down. Write it down. Write it down. Ask God for revelation. Ask God to show you. Ask God, what's your part? What are you supposed to be doing? Okay, God, you. I had this dream. Lord, does it mean anything? Is it a prophetic warning? What is it? What do you need me to do? What is my part? Because we all have a part to play. We all have a job. We all have something that we need to do before our time is up. Amen. Jesus Christ's name. Oh, amen. Glory be to God. Okay, so Psalms 119, verse 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to, a light to my path. Hallelujah. So God's word is a lamp to your feet, meaning God's word will show you the way. God's word will light up what you're supposed to be doing, where you're supposed to be going, who you're supposed to be talking to. Don't do business with that person. Don't talk to that person. Don't even answer the phone. Hallelujah. God, like, like she, like they say, God gives us dreams. I'm, um, all right. I'm gonna give y'all this scripture. Do, 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 do. Glory be to God, man. All right. So it is hallelujah. at chapter two, verse 17, right? It shall come to pass that in the last day, says God, I will pour out my spirit upon flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. So God has poured out his spirit. So that's how come we're able, uh, that's how come a lot of us are able to prophesy and people are dreaming dreams and people are having visions. God is given understanding. God is given revelation because we prophesy apart. So God may show you something and he may show somebody else something so that we can pray according to his will so that we can pray according to his way, says the Holy Spirit of the living God. Um, where else we at? Okay, Second Timothy chapter two, verse fifteen. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker ha who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. So we study to show ourselves approved unto God. You know, like so it's like, okay, Lord, well you told me to do this and I did it. Lord, I've been in your word, God. Wow, God, this is this is amazing. You said this, you did this, you did that, you did that for him, you did that for him, you did that for them. Glory be to God. Because a lot of the things that I learned with me just being in God's presence, I didn't learn in the church. I, a lot of things that, you know, like when God called Moses, he told he told God that he, he couldn't speak that well. So God said, hey, I put words in your brother Aaron's mouth. And for the most part, Aaron did most of the things like God used Aaron to do to do the to do the works. And then Moses, he did point the staff at the Red Sea. But before that, God was using Aaron more than Moses and nobody really talked about him. They only really talked about Moses. So you're going to have to be okay when you don't get vindicated and you don't get validated and people don't say, hey, you know, you're, you're a man of God or you're a woman of God. Or I remember, you know, it was it was a lot of times where God would tell me to do something or help somebody start a business and they'll go give other people credit and then they won't mention my name and God will tell me it's not about you. They don't have to mention you because you didn't do it for them. You did it for me. And I'm like, well, I kind of want to be mentioned a little bit, Lord. And I kind of was there cleaning floor, floors and cleaning toilets and stuff. I kind of was a part of it before it became this big thing. And now I'm just, you know, I kind of was a part of it. And God just be like, you didn't do it for them. You did it for me. So when we do things for God, we get credit from God. We get validation from God. Hallelujah. We get our reward from God in Jesus Christ's name. And sorry, not sorry. That has to be all that matters everybody's not going to salute you. Everybody's not going to say you helped them. Everybody's not going to say, oh, you're such a great person and I love you. Everybody's not going to do that. And you're going to have to be okay with that. You're going to have to be okay with you not getting credit because technically it wasn't your idea anyway because every good and perfect gift comes from God, right? Sorry, not sorry. Okay, so step number four to keep your peace is to stay out of your thoughts. Thank you for the follow. I love you, I love you, I love you. Stay out of your thoughts in Jesus Christ's name. 
Okay, so step number one to keep your peace was confess how you feel to God. Number two, let me go back up. Let me scroll back up. Surrender how you think it should go because God has a plan. Number three, stay in God's holy, perfect word in Jesus Christ's name. And step number four, stay out of your thoughts. You scenario making people in your head. God says, stay out your thoughts. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter nine, verse four, knowing their thoughts, Jesus said, why do you entertain evil thoughts in your heart? So thank you for the follow. I love you, Christopher P717. So God doesn't want us to entertain our thoughts, especially when they are bad, especially when you're thinking about how it's not. Yes. Oh, hi, Mahogany. I love you. Especially when they're not good, when they bad thoughts, like when you're creating scenarios in your head or when you feel like all is failed, you're like, well, I'm not a good person. I'm not a good mom. I'm not this. I'm not that. And it's just like, who told you that? Who's speaking to you? Because that's not God. God is not telling you that. God is not saying that you will never win. God is not saying you should kill yourself. You should cut yourself. Don't nobody care about you. Don't nobody want you. God is not saying any of those things. That is the enemy. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. God is not telling you to kill yourself. God is not telling you to masturbate. God is not telling you to sleep with that man. God is not telling you to abort your child. That's not God. God will not tell you to abort your child, to murder your child. Abortion is murder. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Glory be to God. You know? Get out your thoughts, especially like a lot of times people get abortions because they feel like it's no way to go. Like, I don't have no money. I don't have this. I don't have that. But you shall live and not die. Let that child live and not die. Glory be to God in Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah. Don't know who that was for, but God loves you. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand because you're going to have you're going to have to be judged by that. You know what I'm saying? So repent. Ask God to forgive you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. That's not of God. That's ungodly. John chapter two, I don't care. I don't care how hard your life is. I don't care how much money you don't have. I don't care if that man decided to walk out on you. Do not give the devil the satisfaction of you aborting your child. Because what if that baby that you aborted was the covenant of your, of your covenant baby? What if that baby that you aborted was a prophet? What if that baby that you aborted was your way out of poverty? What if that baby had a purpose from God? That baby was going to be the first millionaire in your family and you just you just destroyed your lineage. My God, I don't know who I'm talking to, but do not abort your baby in Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus, Jesus was a, a covenant child. So was uh so was Boaz. Hallelujah. In Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah. So was Obed. He was a covenant child too. So was Isaac. What would happen? God made Abraham a promise through your offspring. Hallelujah, you will be blessed. Nations will be blessed through your offspring, through your child, through your seed. Thank you. Thank you for joining in Jesus Christ's name. So God makes covenants a lot of times. So who we have a baby with matters. Hallelujah, keep your baby. Don't mistreat your children because you don't have it all. Don't, don't treat your children bad because they daddy not there. Hallelujah, treat your children like you know that they special children remember stuff glory be to god don't mistreat your child that child that child may just be a prophet and the bible says touch not my anointing ones do my prophets no harm so you sit here abusing your child you sit here being mean to your child and the whole time that child is covered by god that child is anointed by god keep your mouth off that baby don't call your child ugly don't call your child bad that is demonic and it is satanic and you are planting seeds of destruction, says the Holy Spirit of the living God. Be kind, speak life. Life and death lies in the power of the tongue. You keep calling your child ugly, then you wonder why they grow up and they be promiscuous, says the Holy Spirit of the living God. God says, I'm warning you. Don't see your child as a burden. God says, I didn't see you as a burden in Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah, we need to do some repenting. When my son was younger, he used to be all over the place and I used to just call him bad all the time. Then one day God stopped me in my tracks. He said, why do you keep calling him bad? I'm like, cause he acting bad. And he said, you're speaking that you're, you're speaking curses over him. And I'm like, well, Lord, I repent. And I stopped calling him bad after that. And his behavior began to change. Hallelujah. In the name of Christ Jesus, we either change, we either charge angels or demons. We got to be careful what we speak out of our mouth. In the name of Jesus Christ, speak life. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. If we could speak to a mountain and tell the mountain to, to be thrown into the sea and it'll happen for us, what you think is happening when you're speaking death over your child? 
death is happening. What you think is happening when you speak life over your child? Life is happening in Jesus Christ's name. Yes, we do. We need to do some repenting. Yes, sis, I love you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yeah. So Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is acceptable and perfect. So you have to tr transform your own mind. When you give your life to Jesus, hey, thank you for joining, love you. When you give your life to Jesus Christ, right, you have to transform your own mind. You have to begin to seek him. You have to begin to read your word. You have to begin to ask God, Lord, purify me. Lord, heal me from my molestation. Heal me from my rape. Heal me from the things that I did that I'm ashamed of. Y'all know how people, when they be young and, and people be cousins touch cousins and family be touching family ask god to heal you from that if you experience that ask god to heal you from rape trauma molestation trauma word trauma hallelujah i had to go live with my auntie when i was young and my auntie used to beat me she used to beat me she used to beat my behind she used to beat me for every little thing all the time you get what i'm saying and i had to be healed from that because it caused me to be violent it caused me to be the type of person like oh you ain't gonna try me we gonna fight because I was defenseless, I was helpless, and she beat me all the time, and I couldn't fight her back. So it, it caused me to grow up and to be kind of violent, like, what's up? What you want to do? I ain't hear no talking, we ain't doing none of that. Because I was abused as a child, you get what I'm saying? So as God began to heal me, he began to deliver me, and that whole violent streak, that whole having pride, and can't nobody say nothing to me, God be that began to wither away in God's presence. Because I was healed and set free. In the name of Jesus Christ, a lot of times when I used to watch Love and Hip Hop and I used to love Tommy and Jocelyn and them, but I realized that they were violent because they were hurt. They were going through stuff, so they was like a tick, tick, ticking time bomb, you know what I'm saying? But if we get healed from that, it removes pride. Like, you know what, I'm gonna just walk away because I ain't got nothing to prove. I ain't got to prove to you that I could beat you up. I know that I could beat you up. I don't got to prove that to you. You know what I'm saying? But back in the day, I felt like I had something to prove because ain't nobody finna beat on me. Ain't nobody, you're not finna try me. You know what I'm saying? So in God's presence, you can be healed. That's why you have to renew your mind. God had to teach me like, daughter, that's pride. I used to care about if people thought that I could sing or not. God said, that's pride. You making it about you. I'm like, hmm, okay, that's pride. So you get on the stage and, and you just sing. You can't care what they think. You can't care if they think that your, your song sound good, if you're a good singer. That's pride. Welcome y'all. Love y'all. So that helps you to have peace by renewing your mind. You seeking after Jesus Christ. You, you asking God to renew your mind. God, heal me from my trauma. Heal me, God. I'm being tormented and I don't have all kind of bad dreams. Lord, heal me. You renew your mind. You seek him. Glory be to God. All right. So Isaiah chapter 26, verse three, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. So when we put our mind on Christ, God will give us peace. It doesn't matter what I'm going through, I have peace. It don't matter what I'm facing, I have peace. I probably cry about it, but I still have peace. God, this hurt my feelings. God, I don't understand. But even in the midst of me crying, I'm not worried. I have peace. I'm just bothered by the situation. Like, why I even got to deal with this in the first place? Like, why I got to deal with that? Why? These folks is annoying, but I still have peace. In Jesus Christ's name, hallelujah. Glory be to God, the Lamb of God, he's so perfect, he's so holy, he's so worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, Philippians 4, chap chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. So God wants us to think about positive things. Hallelujah. Think about the promises that he made you. But don't dwell too much on them where they overtake you and you're not content with where you are. Thinking about the, think about the fact that Jesus died for our sins and he didn't have to. Think about the fact that God gave you that job that you wanted. God gave you friends when you felt, felt like you didn't have no friends. God sent somebody to, today I was worshiping and God had me to call a sister in Christ and he told me to tell her, don't forget that you're anointed. And she began to tell me, you know what's crazy? I just got diagnosed with some sort of rare illness or whatever. And and it's been bothering me. Glory be to God. You know, thank God for him sending us friends. Thank God for him sending us people that that, that could call us when we don't have nobody. Just think about it. In, in my season of going through the worst, 
God sent me people to love on me. He sent me people to check on me. He's, I love music because I'm a musician. He sent me people sending me videos of them singing. I'm like, thank you, Lord. You sent me that small gesture. And it was so nice of you to do that. Let me know that you care about me. You love me. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. See, Martin. Yeah. So Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Keep your heart. Uh, keep your heart with all vigilance, meaning to be watchful, to be careful, pay attention, right? For for from it flows the springs of life. So we got to keep our hearts purified. Pay attention to who you're talking to. If you know that this relationship is toxic, Lord, what you want me to do? I want you to walk away. Dang, okay. Or I want you to step away temporarily. You know what I'm saying? Because you can forgive people, but the Bible says that there's a time to gather and there's a time to separate, you know? So sometimes separation is a good thing. Sometimes separation is even healthy, says the Holy Spirit of the living God. James chapter one, verse eight, he is double-minded and unstable in all his ways. So God wants us to not be double-minded. And when you in your thoughts, it can cause you to be double-minded. Man, I'm sick of being a single mom. Then God sent your husband. I'm not ready for a husband. He don't make enough money. You just said that you were sick of being a single mom. God sent you a man that loves you, that loves your child, but he don't make enough money. Okay, you double-minded and you unstable. You ain't going to be good for him anyway. You're going to ruin it because it's all about the money for you. You're going to mess it up. In Jesus Christ's name, oh, I'm sick of this job. Well, excuse me, you know, we got to let you go. God, why would you let them fire me? Daughter, you just said you were sick of your job. You just said you were tired of these folks. So... I'm giving you what you asked for, but that's not what I wanted. I bet our dad, be, I bet God be up there like, whew, hallelujah. All right, daughter. Well, what do you want? Um, I don't really know. Jesus, it's Lord. Hallelujah. We really need help, y'all. We cannot be double-minded. We can't be double-minded in Jesus Christ's name. Accountability, bro accountability is beautiful that's why we come into repentance that's why we ask god to help us to teach us his ways because his ways are not our ways because sometimes we could be doing stuff we don't even know that is really really wrong and it's causing causing chaos in our life and it's wreaking havoc in our life one of my sisters in christ she asked god for something in particular he gave it to her she reached out to me and was like i'm not happy i'm like well you got exactly what you wanted but why would god give it to me if he knew it wasn't gonna make me happy and I'm like, because you asked for it and he loved you and he a good father. But if he knew that this wasn't going to make me happy, he shouldn't have gave it to me. But you were mad at him. You was going into rebellion because he didn't give it to you. So I don't, I don't get it. And I'm going to defend my daddy. I'm going to defend God. I'm like, hey, well, why don't you ask God to have his way? Well, what does that mean? He got to leave. You just said that you wasn't happy with him being there, baby girl. What is it? You're being double-minded and you're being unstable and you're blaming my father and you need to stop that because my daddy ain't did nothing to you but gave you what you asked for. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. You get what I'm saying? So, huh? Mm -hmm. At this point, ask him to give you what's best for you if you don't know, I think. Right. But what happens if he give you what's best for you and you don't even want what's best for you? What happens if God give you a good man and you want a hood dude and the man that God have for you not a hood dude? And you're like, I want me a hood dude. And God is just like, well, that's not what's best for you. You get what I'm saying? So we have to ask God, hey, thank you for the follow. We have to ask God to help us to surrender our desires and help us to for our desires to line up with his desires. Like, okay, God, this is the type of dude that I want, but is this the type of dude that I need? This is the type of job that I want, but is this the type of job that you want for me? Like like my friend on here, Mimi, right? Uh, God told me to tell her, hey, you know, um, the dream house that you want is nothing compared to the dream house that God has for you. So he said to surrender that house and let him choose. Girl, you gotta rip that list up. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus Christ, rip it up. <laughs> Hallelujah, because God gives you what you need. Hallelujah. When we think about the scripture, and my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. He's not just talking about money, houses, feeding you. He's talking about, 
I know the type of friends that you need. I know the type of business that you need. I know the type of people that you need around you in this season that you finna go through. I know the type of people that you need from around you in the season that you about to go through. In Jesus Christ's name. Thank you for your follow. I love you. In Jesus Christ's name. So he going to supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. But what if sometimes you need to laugh? He going to supply that. What if you need a hug? He going to supply that. What if you need somebody just to tell you, you got this, keep going. He's going to supply that. I can't tell you how many times where I was just sitting here like, Lord, man, am I doing the right thing? Then boom, I get a text message. Hey, Lexus, I just want to tell you, God used you to say this to me. God used you to tell me last year I was going to get married. And eh, I got proposed to a girl. Yeah. And I'm like, thank you, Lord. I'm on the right path. Thank you. I love you. I love you. I love you. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's important for us to stay out of our thoughts. Do not be sitting here in your thoughts, creating scenarios. You know, you have the authority to cast those thoughts down. The, Satan, the Lord rebukes you. I shall live and not die. I am going to carry this baby full term. Thank you. I love you. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Like I know some, like I said, someone reached out to me today and was like, hey, I'll be watching your videos. Thank you for this because I'm going through it. I just had a miscarriage. And I'm like, Lord, I don't know what to say to her, God. That hurt my heart. What am I supposed to say? He said, say this. And I'm like, okay. So you never know how God can use you to help other people. Glory be to God. He is perfect. He is holy. He is worthy to be praised, man. He's so perfect, y'all. So it's like we want to cast our thoughts down so that we can be available to be used. Because if I'm sitting here like, well, I'm so sad about my situation, how am I going to be used? Because my life is not my own. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, yeah, I go through stuff, but other people go through stuff too. And I know what to do. I know what to say. I know how to get you about your funk because I know how to get about my funk. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like we in this together. We need each other. Glory be to God. So Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22 through 24 Put off your old, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires and to be renewed in the spirit. Okay. In the spirit of your minds and put on your new self created after the likeness of God and true righteousness and holiness. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So we got to put off our old ways, put off our old thoughts. Don't be quick to slash nobody's tires. Don't be quick to beat nobody up or call the call every number in his phone trying to figure out if it's a girl or not did god tell you that that man was cheating on you did god tell you that did god tell you that no thank you for the follow i love you i'm gonna give y'all this other scripture that i didn't save mm. maybe i did save it but um it's another scripture okay second corinthians 10 chapter 10 verse 5 uh casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of god and bring it into captivity every thought to obedience to christ so if you feel alone and you wait on the husband and then your ex boo call you're like what you doing what's up how you doing because he know how to talk to you because he used to date you right and you waiting on the husband you in celibacy cast that imagination down well you know i could get a little get her in real quick and then i can repent later cast that down cast it all the way down because it's going to make your waiting process longer then you're going to get mad at god well god where my husband at did you just go sleep with your ex-boyfriend like a week ago now i gotta purify you again now i gotta heal you again now i gotta deliver you again thank you for the follow i love you i love you i love you now i gotta cleanse your spirit again and i gotta because I care about my son too. Because if God, you're waiting on a husband and that man is waiting on a wife. Hallelujah. What if he's being obedient and now you just out here being reckless, giving your vaginal parts to your ex boyfriend? He's an ex for a reason. Glory be to God. I don't know who you are, but don't answer the phone. Hello. Sometimes you got to block them. I remember when my little sister used to tell me her ex boyfriend uh, wrote her. I'm like, um, how did he write you if he's blocked? Oh, I unblocked him. Why? <laughs> Why did you unblock him? Because because he know exactly what to say to you. He know exactly what to do because he's your ex. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, leave up their ex for a reason. Unless God say, "Hey, that's your wife. Hey, that's your husband." Then you maneuver like that. But no, you you're waiting on the husband. God promised your husband. He gave you every detail of his characteristics. Then you still go sleep with somebody else that you know ain't your husband just to get. Just to get off real quick, what if that set your timing five years back? 
my ex and I share a child, so I don't have a choice. Yeah, but you don't have to sleep with him either. You have a choice to keep it clink, clink, locked up. You know what I'm saying? All right. You could talk to her, to your ex about your child, and that's it. You know, leave around. Leave before it get dark, you know, before we get any thoughts, you know what I'm saying? Because it's dark, you know, people be liking R&B music. Girl, he look good. I love when he wear his hair like that. I love when he wear that type of shirt. Oh, no, uh-uh. We ain't doing that. Got to go in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah, don't be downcast, man. Repent. We, we are a family like a giant tree. You know what I'm saying? Just repent. Hallelujah for the kingdom of God is at hand. In Jesus Christ's name. Okay, let him be your best friend. But if you're waiting on God to send you somebody, and if it's not him, you want to clink, clink, shut it down. Shut it down. Don't be cuddling for my sisters in Christ that feel lonely. Well, I just want some attention. I just want to cuddle. Cuddling leads to kissing. Kissing leads to, mm -mm. you know what I'm saying? Then that may lead to you to getting pregnant. But I don't want to be pregnant by him. Now you're getting an abortion. Now you're sad. Yeah, clink, clink. Veronica, you know, you know what it is. All right. So, all right, so in order to keep it peace, number one, we're going to confess, right? We're going to confess how we feel to God. Number two, we surrender how we think the outcome should be because God has a plan. Glory be to God. Number three, we stay in God's word. Hallelujah. Saying his word, his word is like fruit of life. His word is just like eating really good fruit, like really something just very, very good. You ever drunk some ice cold water on a really, really hot day? That's what his word is. It's nutrients. It's salvation. It's your sanity. It's your peace of mind. Glory be to God. You know, stay out your thoughts. And number five, keep God's people close to you. I can't tell y'all how many times, like, I could be, you know, I'm in, I'm in assembly with people. I'm talking to people. And then they'll go months without talking to me. Then when I talk to them, it's like, hey, girl, how you been, man? I ain't been praying. I ain't been worshiping. I ain't been doing nothing. Well, you also, you haven't been joining the Zoom. You haven't been praying with us. You haven't been talking to us. You, It's like a lot of times when people walk away from people of God, it's like that's when they're their most vulnerable. The enemy begins to mess with them. Like, girl, you know you want to get, you know you want to get it popping. You know you want to go smoke. You know you want to go do this. You know you want to go drink. You know you want to go do this. I realize when you're not gathering with the body of Christ anymore. So like, okay, we used to have Zoom calls um, last year. We used to have a lot of Zoom calls where we was praying, where God would prophesy to people, where we would have testimony Tuesdays where people get on there and give their testimonies and things like that. And I noticed when people would stop joining the Zoom calls, they'll start, they'll they'll fall away. Then they'll call me a couple of weeks later, like, Alexis, can you pray with me? You know, I had sex and da 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 And it's just like, Okay, let's pray. You know, read your Bible. Thank y'all for joining. I love it. I read your Bible. Talk to God, blah, blah, blah. And I notice when you start to walk away from the assembly, the God ordained assembly, God orchestrated assembly, it's easy to you, for you to fall prey to the enemy. In Jesus Christ's name, when you, because you, you no longer have no more accountability. You know what I'm saying? And it's hard to desire accountability if you want to do what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, as soon as you stop talking to people that talk to you about God, that Hey, God said, don't do this. Don't talk to that person. Or y'all, let's pray. Let's 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 fast or whatever like that. It's like it's easy for you to go into sin. It's easy for the enemy. Like you know, you want to call him. He told you it was fine. You know, he he put his hand on your thigh when y'all was talking. You know, it made you feel all tingly on the inside. It's easy to listen to the voice of the enemy because you're no longer protected. You're no longer in the body of Christ that God ordained you to. I'm talking about like God ordained. Thank you for joining God ordained assembly, you know? So it's important for you to keep your peace, to be surrounded by people that really love God, people that really love Jesus, people that can get to Christ on your behalf. Hallelujah. People that's really living this thing out so that they can hold you accountable in Jesus Christ's name, because it's really hard when you get delivered from something and you go back to it, then it's, it's like 10 times worse. And I'm going to tell you why I'm, I'm going to give you out a scripture to go with that. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. hopefully this helping somebody i love y'all um all right all right all right all right okay so matthew chapter 12 verse 43 when an impure spirit comes out of person it goes through air through every place is seeking rest and it does not find it then it says i will return to the house i left when it arrives it finds the house unoccupied that's when you don't have the holy spirit that's when you don't ask god to to fill you up with his holy spirit right swept clean and put in order 
but it's it's swept clean, it's put in order, but it's unoccupied, right? Uh, Matthew chapter 12, verse 45, then it goes and takes with it seven other spirits more wicked than itself, and they go and live in there. And the final condition of that person is worse than the first. That is how it will be with this wicked generation. So we are in a we are in the last days to where everything is wicked. People just people just walking and they're just evil. They just mean. They just hateful. They're just nasty. But it's because their vessels are open and a lot of say if you got delivered from something in 2012. Say you used to be messy or jealous or envious in 2012. Here come 2020. You know, and then you go through something and now you back jealous, you back. And now seven more unclean spirits along with that has come to dwell in your midst. Amen. In Jesus Christ's name. So we have to be mindful when God surrounds you with the body of Christ is for your protection. When God surrounds you with people that really love him, that really obey him. Thank you for joining. It's for your protection. It's, it's so important to be even when I say assembly, it, it could be on this live. It could be on the Facebook group. It don't necessarily have to be at an actual church. I'm not talking about that. If God leads you there, then he leads you there, right? But, you know, it's important to be surrounded by a body. Thank you for joining so that we can help each other. Iron sharpens iron. Hallelujah. And I'm going to give y'all, uh, uh, okay, I do have that scripture. Okay, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. So we're supposed to stir up one another. We're supposed to help each other. Like, hey, bro, I see you struggling in that area. Let me pray for you. Hey, I know, I know you got that going on. Let me pray for you. You get what I'm saying? So you be led by God and let God lead you to the assembly that he wants you to be a part of. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Not neglected to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day drawing near. So we're supposed to encourage each other. Thank you for joining. And we're supposed to help each other because we need each other. Like, we're all a part of God's body. It is his will. You know what I'm saying? We need each other. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So Acts chapter 2, verse 42. And they devoted themselves to the apostles, teaching and the fellowship to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Hallelujah in Jesus Christ's name. So fellowship is important. The apostles, God sent them out two by two. Oh, Mahogany, I love you. First of all, Mahogany, let me just, let me, I always invite you over here. I always tell you, hey, you come, you can spend a night, you and Aiden, y'all can spend a night, and you just decide not to come. That'd be you thing. We could be fellowshipping, we could be singing this thing, be singing all through the house. Hallelujah in Jesus Christ's name. But yeah, so, uh, act, but that, but that goes back to, you know, when you, when you, when you walk away from an assembly or you walk away from the presence of God, how it's like you don't really want to be around that if you 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 know what i'm saying you you start doing other things it's like well i don't even really want to be over there i don't you know what i'm saying it it kills your desire sin kills your desire to pray sin kills your desire to worship sin kills your de desire to read the bible sin kills your desire to be around other people of god because you don't really because it's like it's like a repellent thank you holy spirit it's it's not even always on purpose it's like a repellent it's just like it, you you want to repel against it because it's like that's light and, and darkness is trying to creep over you glory be to thank you lord that's that's what he gave me when you start to live in sin or you start dwelling in sin it's like a repellent to the light of christ it's like uh, you know what i'm saying and it make you isolate and it also give you mind battles it also gives you torment sometimes and make you feel like i'm not doing enough i'm not doing good enough i'm not this i'm not that and the devil is a liar and he is a father of lies. The Bible says that lying is his native language. Thank you for joining. I love y'all. So, you know, we want to assemble with people so that with godly people so that they can give us God's word so that we can have peace. Hallelujah. We need God's peace. We need God's peace. We need God's peace. Well, I have a lot of videos on um on TikTok too. I have a lot of I have a lot of videos on TikTok that has God's presence in Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah. Um, last year, the Lord took me off of social media. He had me to start a women's group. And then I was off social media for six months. And he said, when I put you back on, I'll put my words in your mouth. I will give you something to say every single day. And he has kept his word in Jesus Christ's name. You asked me, can you get a word for your job? I, I don't understand what that means. I don't understand. Can you, you know, can you get a word for your job? I, I don't get it. Okay, so Acts chapter, oh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 26. What then, brothers, 
when you came when you come together each one has a hymn a lesson a revelation a tongue or an interpretation let all things be done for the building up so we're supposed to build each other up so you probably can't prophesy but i can you probably pray an intercessory but i can't you know what i'm saying you probably can't interpret dreams but i can't in jesus christ's name hallelujah so it's like all of it's enough food at this table for all of us to eat what i can't do you probably can't do what you don't have i probably have you know the things that god has taught me maybe he hasn't taught you yet maybe god has given you revelation about things that he hasn't given me yet but we're all supposed to come together so we can build each other up in the name of jesus christ hallelujah because we all need each other hallelujah in jesus christ's name that's why god called some to be apostles some to be preachers some to be teachers some to be evangelists some to be prophets hallelujah in jesus christ's name glory be to god hallelujah so Acts chapter 12 verse 5 so was kept in prison but the church was earnestly praying for him i can't tell y'all how many times like in our in our women's group that we, what we got i got a facebook group too it's called falling in love with jesus right where somebody will say hey can y'all pray for me and then multiple people will pray and god will do it he'll instantly move he'll instantly move glory be to god because that's just how god served with two or three of you on earth agree concerning anything it will be done for you by my father in heaven that is his word hallelujah in jesus christ's name he is perfect he is holy he is worthy to be praised he is awesome oh you said pin her comment y'all i don't know how to work tiktok oh boom i got it okay glory be to god um acts chapter 12 verse 2 and when he had considered the thing he came to the house of mary the mother of john whose surname was mark where many were gathered together praying so the purpose of the assembly is for us to pray together. Jesus said, go out to all nations and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So the whole purpose of the assembly is for us to build each other up so that we can go out and make disciples in Jesus Christ's name. So you may stay a part of this assembly or the assembly God put you or and you may go. You know, it, it may not be forever. God may put you there for a season or God may put you there to be permanent. That's why we be led by God. In Jesus Christ's name, thank you for joining in all that we do. So it's important for you to be surrounded by love. It's important for you to be surrounded by people that can pray for you, people that love you, people that care about you, people that will call on the name of Jesus on your behalf. Hallelujah. People that will fast for you, people that will worship God for you. Like I, like I said the other day, this girl, she wrote me, she said, hey, Lexus, you know, every morning God been waking me up at three in the morning just to pray for you. I don't know what you're going through, but... You have people that care about you enough to pray for you. And I'm like, thank you for that. I didn't tell her what I was going through, but I told her, thank you. You know what I'm saying? And it, and when you become a part of the body of Christ, God will send people to pray for you. He'll send people, hey, my daughter need her light bill paid. Pay for it. My daughter need a house. You got three. Give her that house. My son need a car. You got four cars. Give him a car. You get what I'm saying? When you become a part of a body, God will begin to tell people to serve you. God will begin to put you on people's heart so that they can help you. They can take care of you in the name of 